إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله We praise Allah, we thank Him, we seek His refuge from our weak deeds. Whoever Allah led to guidance, to the straight path, no one can mislead Him. And whoever misled by Allah, no one can lead Him. I bear witness that there is no God worth to be worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his messenger and his slave. My brother and sister, we welcome you in this new edition, Forgotten Sunnah, with a new episode about the Sunnah, which unfortunately forgotten by many Muslims. And the Sunnah, as you all are aware, is the second source. We have two main sources for our religion. The first source is the Quran, and the second source is the Sunnah. Because Rasulullah told us, he said, "Taraktu fiqum, ma anta masaktum bi, lan tadullu abadan." I left among you, behind me. If you stick to them, two things: if you stick to them, you will never get lost. Al Quran and Sunnah. <laughs> So we really not just, we cannot just, you know, performing our religion only just relying on the Quran. Because the Sunnah is actually, you know, supporting the Quran. And actually, what is the Sunnah? The Sunnah actually, it is the explanation, the commentary of the Quran. So I would now, I will tackle some Sunnah. Uh, the Sunnah I will tackle first one is rain seeking. When we got drought, any time in case of drought, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa have told us and taught us that any time we are facing drought, that means no rain for a long time, the, you know, the, the land is getting dry, and the farmers are looking for rain, and you know, it's like it's going to be a disaster. So we Muslim, alhamdulillah, we have... Rasulullah have taught us what to do in case of drought. So he told, go to the masajid and then perform salat al-istisqa. Salat al-istisqa means seeking rain from Allah, asking Allah to give us rain. And salat al-istisqa, actually, it is not obligatory salat, it is sunnah. If some group of the people have performed it, then it will be not obligatory on others. But if nobody will go and perform salah, then it will be obligated and obligatory on each person. So in, in Arabic, it is fardu kifaya, walaysat fardu ayn. Not it is obligatory on each person. If other people, if another group, but if the all people don't do it, then it's going to be obligatory on each person. How we perform salat al sasqa Salat al sasqa is not different from salat from salat al eid Salat al sasqa is the same, you know, like Salat al-Eid. And the, the Imam will make Salah, and then he will give khutbah. He will perform Salah first, like Salat al-Eid. Exactly. You know, the people go, but it is recommended to be performed in the open area, not inside the masjid. But in case of a city or any, or any country, like our brothers in non-Muslim country, if they want to perform the sunnah, I mean, if they didn't find a lot, you know, and they did not get permission from the locality or from the, you know, from the Ministry of Material or 
or you know the the, the, uh, the authority from in this specific country, they can perform it inside the masjid. But the sunnah, it is you know salat al-sisqa, seeking rain from Allah, should be performed actually in the open area. So how we you know going to perform salat al-sisqa? As I said. It is exactly not different at all from Salat al Eid. Except that the Imam, after he performs Salah, you know, exactly, he will make, as I said, you know, seven takbira in the first rak'ah, and then he will make ruku', and then he will, then after the second rak'ah, he will make five takbira, and then he will make the sleep. Then he will stand up, he will go and, you know, climb the, you know, the stairs of the al member and then he will give khutbah, only one khutbah. Now, you know, some imam give khutbah, but actually one khutbah or two khutbah if, if the imam want to. But if, if he make one khutbah, it's acceptable. And if he make two khutbah, it's still acceptable. But he will add dua, special dua. The imam, he will make a special dua, you know, for that Allah, Allahumma ghithna, Allahumma ghithna, Allahumma ghithna. And he will make as much as he can to make dua. And this is exactly what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did. Because it did happen during Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that in Medina, the land uh, really got drought. And so the people came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They said, Rasulullah sallallahu help us. Please, you know, uh, rescue us, you know, after Allah. Help us because the, the land is getting dry and everything is going, our trees are dying and our animals. So Rasulullah immediately you know, he went, he ran away, he rushed to the masjid, and he called for the prayer. While he is performing salah, salah why he make dua, the sky full with clouds, full, get full with clouds, and the rain continued until the Sikumpani came to Rasulullah and they said, oh, messenger of Allah, please call, ask Allah to stop rain. You know, they asked him because the rain was so much, and this is another blessing of Prophet Sallallahu this is also, this salah, my brother and sister, we Muslim should be proud of it. You know, non-Muslim, you know, sometimes they make fun of us. They said, look at them, you know, they're asking, Alhamdulillah, 90% when the Muslim perform salat al-istisqa, seeking rain, asking Allah rain, Allah will respond to them. Allah will respond to them. Alhamdulillah. This is also salah. Now, is it obligatory? that everybody, every Muslim must go and perform salah? No, as I said, if some group have take care of it, then don't do it for everybody to go and perform salah. But again, this is the sunnah. Also, my brothers, one of the sunnah is salat tarawih. Salat tarawih, as you all aware, it only performed during Ramadan. And it is one of the recommended sunnah. How tarawih started? During, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi during his time, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to perform Salah alone. You know, he used to perform Salah Taraweeh alone. And then, on the second night, he, you know, found that many people on, he continued. Many companions are performing behind him. He did it three times. On the third, on the fourth night, he stopped it. When he was asked why, he said, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be obligatory on you because it's a sunnah. But after the death of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he came to the masjid in Medina during his time and he found the Muslim, the companions are performing taraweeh, everybody by himself. Then he said, why don't get all the people together in a suit of one? So he is the one actually put taraweeh again. But you know, Taraweeh is the taraweeh, the meaning of taraweeh is coming from ruh. Taraweeh, that's mean to, you know, uh, make it easy in yourself, to relax, relaxation. So that's why the imam make two rak'ah and then taslim, and then two rak'ah and then taslim, and then he rests for about five minutes. So taraweeh, you know, it is, I said, it is not a, a, you know, a obligatory salah, it is sunnah, but it is recommended from men and women, but also women, you know, are recommended to go taraweeh. And you know, my brother, it's only happened only once a year. So why not not going and getting the reward, to getting the blessing from Allah You know, many people, unfortunately, you know, they, that the masjid is full and people still, you know, other people are, you know, 
still, you know, you know, away from the masjid, uh, buying, selling, you know, and the people are making dua. So I, I recommend my brother and sister, inshallah, uh, during Ramadan, don't miss Salat al-Taraweeh. So Salat al-Taraweeh, you would ask me now, how many rak'ah? It has been recorded that Rasulullah never exceed during you know, Umar bin Khattab, Rasulullah, not more than 11 rak'ah, which is he perform, you know, nine, and then the water, the shafa is two, and then the water is 11. So this is actually the sunnah. Uh, that's why the majority of the masajid in whole world, they perform eight rak'ah, and then two more rak'ah, this is 10, and the last one, the water, is 11 rak'ah. But if you are at home, if you want to make more, it's up to you. But if you make water, if you perform water with the imam, then there is no, there is no two water in one night. If you perform water, shafa and water with the imam in the masjid, then, then don't go home and make another water. Because Rasulullah Sallam uh, said no water twice at night. But if you would like to make your own qiyam, your own water, then when the imam makes a slim on the last rak'ah, the, the, the water, then after he makes a slim, you stand up. Stand up and then make your own water if you want to do that. If you think that, that you really want to make a long water, then you can do it at home after the, you have to read the imam. But I, again, I repeat, I, I say to my brother and sister, do not miss the taraweeh because Rasulullah Sallam, he said, whoever stands with the imam, until he finish, and he means taraweeh, it will be recorded for him like if he stand it all night. If you stand the taraweeh with the imam until he finish, it will be recorded for you like if you have stand it all night. My brother and sister, stay with us and stay tuned. We'll be back after this break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy, for his messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. If a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, truthfully, asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. We have as Muslims a duty. And that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for. And the Prophet sallallahu was sent to all mankind. So the ummah or the people of the Prophet sallallahu are all mankind since the time of the Prophet sallallahu till the day of judgment. Why waste our life? without getting to know every verse in the Qur'an, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Welcome back, brother and sister. We'll continue our... Uh, talk about the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam, which is forgotten by many people. Also, from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam, which unfortunately many people don't attend, which is eclipse Salah, you know, Salat al-Khusuf or Salat al-Khusuf. Salat al-Khusuf is, you know, when the moon and, uh, al uh, sorry, al-Khusuf is a shams and al-Khusuf is al-Qamar, the moon. And when this take place, First of all, it did happen during the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, you know, the sun uh, has sun clips. But it, just, it happened that coincident, you know, coincident with this Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, Ibrahim uh, radiallahu an, the son of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, died in the same day. So the companion thought that the sun eclipse, you know, you know because of the death, of Ibrahim. So Rasulullah Sallam, you know, he called the people to Salah and then he went to Mi Khutbah and he in clarified 
to the people that the sun or the moon will never ever, you know, eclipse well, for any death for anybody, even if he's the son of Prophet But he told them that when this, you know, phenomena, you know, took place, you should run to the masjid and the mu'addin must go to the masjid and he called many times, As-salatu jami'ah, the salah in congregation, salah in congregation, salah in congregation. He should repeat three times by, by the loudspeaker because we have, you know, the new facility. And he will pause for about two or three minutes and then he will repeat As-salatu jami'ah, As-salatu jami'ah three, three times, which means in English, As-salah in congregation, in congregation, As-salah, you know, in congregation three times. So when the people come, you know, Salat al Salat al Kusuf or al Khusuf, when the masjid is almost, you know, doesn't have to be full, you know, but in Mecca, of course in Medina, the masjid is always full. For the last 24 hours, it's full. But for the regular masjid, the Imam have to wait, you know, at least half an hour, you know, and then when the, he see he almost has two or three rows, then he will start Salat without Iqama. There is no Iqama for Salat al-Kusuf or Salat al-Kusuf, the eclipse, uh, moon eclipse or sun eclipse. How do we perform Salat al-Kusuf or Salat al-Kusuf, sun eclipse? It is a little bit different than Salat al-Eid and Salat al-Istisqa, uh, al seeking rain. It is kind of long Salah. So the Imam will make takbir and then starts reciting al-Fatiha. Then he will recite you know, after Al-Fatiha, a very long surah. He should really pick up uh, or, you know, select certain long surah and a little bit long, and then he will read it. And then again, he will make, after he finish it, he will make ruku' And he should make it very long ruku' Yani, it varies between five to seven minutes, almost ruku' or 10 minutes. And then he will raise up from ruku' not sujood, he will not make sujood. He will make, he will also, he will recite Al-Fatiha again and make, and also after he recite Al-Fatiha again, he will recite another surah, again another surah, but not as long as the first one, a little bit shorter. And then after he that, then he will make sujood. This is Salat al -Sizqa. but it is recommended that the Imam, you know, or all the Imams, they should really make it a little bit long until when they leave, inshallah, the masjid, the sun eclipse will be gone, will be clear. And this is what happened during Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu he performed Salat, uh, sun eclipse and uh, the moon eclipse until when he make it very long, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, until this is the sunnah. You know, we know this is, you know, and we know this is a, a new, uh, what you call, you know, a phenomena. This is a... a, a you know, a geographic phenomena, but in the same time, this is a sunnah. But it will never take place because of a death of a person, whether a king or a very important person. Do not believe this. This is happening, and this is actually a sign to make the people fear Allah and to get scared, you know, and then they should run. The sign or the, 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 the wisdom behind, you know, sun eclipse and moon eclipse, so the people, you know, go back to Allah and fear Allah more and then they get scared. So this is very important for all the Muslim when they hear this as salatu jami'ah or when they, when they see. Usually it is well predicted. Usually there is a news about it. You know, there are, you know, the people who are really, you know, their job is, you know, going by counting and they, uh, they know. They always, you know, announce it in the paper that there will be a ton clips take place after, and they will give the date, and they will give exactly the time. But it doesn't mean, you know, that they, they, this is, you know, they know before Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one have decided this phenomena to take place before he created the, the, the universe. So even of the, the people predict it, and they know the time about it, and they will say it will be so on a certain day, certain time, it doesn't mean that they know, they know from themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, you know, decided already in the book when he created this universe that in this day, in this certain date, 
the sun eclipse will take place or the moon eclipse will take place. So we as Muslim, whenever we hear or we know, you know, during the media that the sun eclipse will take place on a certain date, we should prepare ourselves and we should really go and perform the sunnah. We should not, you know, become lazy and say, well, somebody else is doing it and what should I do? And you know, it doesn't happen every day or every week. Sometime, you know, twice, three times a year, that's it. So I advise my brother and sister uh, you know, not to miss going performing Salat al-Kusuf, inshallah ta'ala. Also, from the Sunnah, al when you are performing, when you are traveling, you also, Allah gave us a waiver. When you are traveling anytime, you are still traveling, Allah gave us, you know, a very good sunnah that we should, we can join, you know, we can join Salat al-Dhuhr wal asr together. We can perform Salat al-Dhuhr al asr two rak'ah al-Dhuhr and two rak'ah al-Asr. And it's up to you. If you are traveling and you want to delay Dhuhr with Asr, it's still, you know, permissible. If you want to know to perform Asr with Dhuhr, it's still permissible. It's up to you. You know, it depends on your situation. And unless, unless you are in the airplane and you will arrive, you know, almost Maghrib time. If you think you're going to arrive Maghrib time to this, then perform it with, you know, Asr with Dhuhr. If you think you're going to arrive, you know, at Maghrib time at the airport, then perform Asr with Dhuhr. But in general, it's up to you. It is your obligation to choose whatever you want. Either Dhuhr, either Asr with Dhuhr, or Dhuhr with Asr. It's up to you. Or, Aydan, also Maghrib and Isha. Either you perform Isha with Maghrib when you are traveling, or Maghrib with Isha. You delay, or you put it ahead of time. But Maghrib, stay as it is. Only three rak'ah. You don't make it short. Asr, Dhuhr, make it two rak'ah. You make two rak'ah, and then you taslim, and then make another iqama, then al-asr. Al-Maghrib, you make iqama, you make three rak'ah, then taslim. Then you make iqama and make salat al-isha before joining salat. This is a, you know, Allah is giving a waiver and we should really perform it, you know, as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to do his abrogatory salah, he also want us to take his waiver, his permission. In Allah yuhibbuk ama an ta'ata azaimuh, yuhibbu an ta'ata rukhasuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he likes, as you, he want us to perform his obligation, obligatory salah, he also want us to take to also perform his permission and his waivers. No. So also, uh, for, for one of the sunnah also, is when you are in the masjid after salah, it is you know, recommended for the men, not the women of course, after you finish salah, is you, re you raise your voice with tasbih. Some people, you know, you notice after salah, he is completely silent. You don't hear anything from him. He, maybe he is making supplication, but I know the, it's been narrated, you know, of the, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anh, he said, we came to know that the salah is over from the tasbih of the people, their raising voice. So anytime you are performing salah, after you finish salah, Either no, you don't, you don't shout like Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, like this. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah, after salah. I remember my brothers and sisters, you know, tasbih after salah, especially when you're performing it the way as Rasulullah taught us. You make Subhanallah 33, Alhamdulillah 33, Allahu Akbar 33, and then you finish it. This is 99. And then you finish it, you complete it. With the 100, you say, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, laha al-mulk, wa laha al-hamd, wa ala kulli shayin qadir. Only very rare of people, few people are doing this. Even the reward, you know, the reward of this making tasbih in two, three minutes, Allah will erase, will demolish, will completely, you know, forgive you for all your sins. Even, he said, as, even if it's similar to the form at the form of the ocean. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِثْلَ زَبَدِ الْبَحْرُ So I advise myself and my brothers to really not to leave this, you know, uh, tasbih after a salah. And for the men, they should little bit raise your voice, but not to, you know, uh, 
uh, other, bother other people. And also, uh, one more just sunnah that many people, unfortunately, especially spouses, they are not performing this. And which is actually when somebody, when the man wants to have a sexual intercourse with his, his family, with his wife, it is a sunnah that you really, Bismillah, Allahumma jalbibna shaytana wa jannibna shaytan mazalana. Oh Allah, Bismillah, oh Allah, keep the shaytan away from us and keep the shaytan from the thing you're going to give us, the bounties, maybe the boy, the girl. So a sunnah for the man before he approaches his wife, he should say, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaytana wa jannibna shaytan mazalana. Brother and sister, we conclude our show today. I hope we look, see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah, our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to Him. He wanted humans to be the best and give His best religion to them. Allah, our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to Him. All in humans to be the best And give his best religion to them So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price.